Yeah. Franklin County Board of County Commission is now back in session. I guess it's 10 o'clock. We'll go for the public hearing. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm uh, standing in for Mark Curran today because I wore the tie and he didn't. So. Okay. Uh, that's that's good. Um, so what this is is every year you all, uh, the board, has an opportunity to adopt a public um, a capital improvement plan, capital improvement schedule. The schedule is a wish list. It's not uh, a budgeting item. It's nothing that you have to that you have to fret over during your budget process. But this list for the next five years, those items that you would like to see funded, we oftentimes put things on the list that we know we're going to apply for grants because we get points in the grant application if it's on our list. So it's it's a sort of mixture of things, but it's a wish list. And if there's anything else you want to add, we can add it. Uh, but this is the best wish list that Mark Curran came up with based upon conversations he's had with you all and uh, over the last few months. So that's what this is. It's a wish list for things. And you see there that uh, most of them on that list are, are unfunded. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have no list. What oh, I'm sorry. About? Thank you, y'all. should be part of the agenda. Number nine? This isn't. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, Alan, I would like to ask something, if, if I can, Mr. Chairman. Really? Uh, on the second line for 2021, 20, okay. uh, under Parks and Recs, there is 150 for St. George Island Lighthouse Park restroom renovation. Uh, okay. TDC has agreed to pursue the loan to completely rebuild and reconstruct that restroom. Okay. So I'd like to take that off, but I would like to leave the 150 there for additional parking spaces on St. George Island. So just rename or it St. George Island Lighthouse Parking Lot Improvements. Yep. Okay. Or parking Lot Improvements in the Business District. What are yours? Okay. Since it is a wish list. Yeah. Great. You know, Alan, I, I think this is a, a really good monitoring tool to me. It, it, if, you, if you really want to see the big picture of the county, it, it just seems to me that this is, we're looking at it right here. And I presume that this is also sort of the roadmap that uh, Mark Carrington goes by as he considers yeah, grant applications. Uh, Commissioner McCain, can you turn your microphone on, please? Okay, I think that what I see this as is an excellent uh, big picture for our county. And it, uh, I see it also as um, a good guide for the next five years or, or more. And I would presume that it's also a uh, tool that Mark Curington uses it to monitor a timely grant funding. Oh, yes. yes All of is. the above. Yes, that's correct. That's, that's, the, that's the value of it. I think this is, this is a, a real important document. And it can be modified at any time. It's just that yeah. once a year we have to do it. But if you had other things, it can be added to. It's not a, not a big process. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Well, that one change then of changing the St. George Island bathroom to uh, parking lot improvements, uh, you know, we need a motion to approve. Or any public, oh, comments. Sorry, public comments? Sorry, this is a public yeah. hearing, so we're going to have to. Any public comments on this? Did you public put Ryan's drive in there? Uh, Mr. Oh. Commissioner, I've just looked at this this morning, so I don't know what is in here. Ryan's drive in Caraville, you know, we need to redo that whole uh, drain. Uh, culvert pipe that's go across Ryan Drive, it sunk in. Well, now is this is Ryan Drive in the county or in the city? Well, like we still don't know who it belongs to. We've been battling back and forth to see it in the county, so we ain't never said who it belongs to. We don't have it, we have County 167 with some sidewalk work, but we generally don't list things that are in the cities. But what I'm saying, they've uh, they said that we own it and we say that they own it. Well, I we leave this one again. This is a document that is living, breathing, and you all can amend at any time. So I'll defer to the attorney to give us a, a, a determination on who owns it, and then we can amend it, if, or however you want to do it. Doesn't matter. I mean, Ryan Drive belongs to the city. That's the same okay. position we've taken. The okay. City of Appalachia is trying to get us to take 12th Street. Carroll County is trying to get us to take Ryan Drive. They're basing it on some claim made under a, some DOT map. The way I understand their arguments, but you know, the cities own the the roads inside the municipal boundaries unless the county decides that we're going to adopt it and accept it as a county road and the cities agree we can take it as a county road and we've never had that agreement with them i know they've said it's ours but we haven't agreed that it's ours so as far as i'm concerned ryan drive belongs to the city of caravel just like 12th street within the municipal boundaries of appalach belongs to the city of appalachicola y'all can agree to do something else differently 
but y'all have to mutually agree to do that. They can't force you to take it, and you can't force them to take one of your county roads either. So that's where we are. That's what I was thinking. Maybe we could give Alligator Drive to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't want it. Okay, so, yeah, that's the same, same scenario. I'd like to make a motion to approve this uh, capital Wait a minute. Schedule. We can't do oh. that. Yeah. It's public hearing. Okay. Well, nobody's got, uh, standing up, sir. Sorry. We got the hip on the public <clears throat> if they want to okay. do it. Now, this is a public hearing. This is your time to talk if we want to talk. If they. No public hearing? Comment. No public comment. No public comment. All right. Pledge of the boat. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Island View Park, is that is that a project that should be considered in this list? Well, um, the Island View Park is a FEMA project, and we don't have any of the FEMA projects on this list because that's sort of separate funding. I mean, if we run into trouble, we can always add it later. Okay. But, but right now, we this is not FEMA or hurricane-related stuff. Okay. Pledge of the board. I move we adopt this document. Second. I got a motion on floor by Commissioner Burt, second by Commissioner Massey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I pass the unanimous. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, if I could follow up on those comments about Ryan Drive and 12th Street and Appalachia, just because the municipalities own those roads and we do not own it, it doesn't mean that we can't, as we have in the past through you know grant applications and things of that nature, as it fits into the county plan. I mean, we've helped them in the past. We could help them in the future, but that doesn't mean that we own the roads. So I think that's where part of the confusion may have been created is we have helped both of the, the municipalities, but we've never accepted any ownership of, the, of either of those roads, Ryan Drive or 12th Street in Appalachia within the municipal boundaries. So just want to add that comment for the record. Mr. Chairman, well, and Attorney Shuler, that's because Presently, nobody in the municipalities have anybody that's LAP certified. Isn't that correct? That's why the county does it on um, their behalf. Like we're doing the sidewalk project. As far as helping with the seven. grants, yes, I yes. believe that is the reason. Right. The county has the only LAP certified uh, person that, that's able to qualify for those grants. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we'd have to get the county to help write the grant to do Ryan's Drive, right? That's a possibility that the board has available to it. I don't know how. The availability of grants and the need for the county to use those grants as it balances with the either of the two cities that i don't know that's something that is a policy decision y'all have to make in conjunction with your uh, your administrative staff at planning and zoning but is it a possibility yes yes commissioner uh, the attorney's right if, if if it meets the the fdot requirements to be a lap project yes the county will assist in getting it done will you check on that because it ain't long before it's going to cave completely and we done rebuild it like two or three times I think, think there any of the FDOT uh, projects. Them there. pipes were putting there in the 40s. Hey, probably. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Next on the agenda will be Mr. Mr. David Walker with the Wayne Memorial Hospital. Mr. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good. I trust you all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, my, na my name is David Walker, interim CEO of Wings Memorial Hospital. I'm just going to give you an overview of some of the things that we've um, been doing, you know, for the last um, three months. We're in the midst of our annual audit, hospital audit report. Um, it is being done by Carl Riggs and Ingram. That report should be wrapping up shortly, and I will ask. Um, Carl Riggs and Ingram to give a, a presentation of the findings to the County Commission. I think that this report will really tell us, tell us where we're at uh, with our finances. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. In October 2019, we requested um, some additional funds that we thought we may need to meet our payroll. I'm pleased to admit that we did not um, have to request that from the county. You know, we made it you know, um, limping, but we made it. So that's good. That's a good thing. That you know, we have thing. to get in the idea of really of monitoring our expenses. Um, we can't spend more than we make. 
we got to live within our means. We want to try to increase our revenue and minimize our expenses. So that's some of the things that I'm looking at and working on as well. Our managed care contracting update, <clears throat> we're in the process of re renegotiating our managed care contracts. We just rene re renegotiated um, Blue Cross Blue Shield for a higher rate, and we'll be looking to do some other contracts that we have also. We'll be looking at our third-party contracts as well. We partnered with the uh, Florida Department of Health, State Rural Health Office. They assisted us with applying for a grant with the Center for Optimizing Rural Health at Texas A&M University. Texas A&M has a Vulnerable Rural Hospital Assistance Program, which offers technical assistance to vulnerable hospitals. Notifications of grant awards will be released at the end of December 2019. We're partnered with the local health department to provide hepatitis and rabies vaccinations for individuals that may need treatment so we can treat those individuals in county instead of them having to go to the neighboring counties to receive that treatment. We're also looking to update our IT equipment. Our IT equipment is very outdated. Uh, one of the more pressing needs is to update our email software protection against phishing and outside threats. Uh, we have a quote for $9,516 to update our email and wear protections. We'll take care of that within our budget at the hospital. We've also been in conversation with FS, FSU College of School of Medicine. Um, they, they've been very, very engaging with the hospital. We had a great phone call with Dr. Brian Harron, FSU College of Medicine Rural Health Policy and Research Center. He is interested in partnering with us to jointly apply for federal grants which targets population-based health initiatives in rural communities. We also um, is looking to expand our um, outpatient radiology, <coughs> respiratory, and lab services in Apalachicola. We currently close down for business at 5 or 4.30. We're looking to expand that to 8 o'clock because we have those um, individuals, those technicians on campus at the hospital there, so we just probably want to expand it into the evening hours um, just looking for um, um, additional revenue. One of the things that I believe we need to do at the hospital is seek um, and go out there and diversify our funding sources. We need to really look at outside funding and maybe look at the money that we get from the county, a portion of that to be put into reserves, you know, so we can help our cash reserves to grow. Um, I will continue to be, you know, just looking beyond Franklin County for help for our hospital. And once again, you know, thank you for the opportunity, you know, to serve you and the hospital board. Any questions? Mr. Chairman. There, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to uh, just offer some praise, if you will. Um, I, I think that pursuing those uh, managed care contracts mm -hmm. is another pathway of access to our hospital. Sometimes it isn't competencies that gets us your patients, it's what insurances do you take? And especially that you're beefing up the uh, revenue side of those contracts. Many of them have been stale for many years, and I'm really glad to see you doing that. I'm also uh, revitalized by the fact that uh, the FSU School of Medicine is uh, actively in interested and involved here in our county. I think that is going to just add a huge amount of uh, lifeblood and medical talent to this county that we've never seen before. And I'm just very pleased about these points. Thanks. Thank you. You got to tell them they can run a session right in the hospital if they want to. <laughs> yeah, they can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we want to just open up our hospital, you yeah. know, to whatever they want to partner with us on. I guess on another note, um, you, and, you and Mr. Cream, will y'all know about when we're going to hear a verdict from the... the yeah, the public hearings. Yeah, um, the hospital board chairman um, wants to make a decision, you know, by, by this month, December you know, no later than the first of the year, but hopefully this month or the beginning of the first of the year we'll make a decision. All right. Anybody got anything else for keep up the good work? Well, thank you. I have Nicole coming. Um, okay. Uh, Next will be the plan operation. Mr. Cole Shippy. Shippy. Good morning, gentlemen. Nicole Cheppy, Plan Operations for the Hospital. I just, one piece of news is the ACA t Stage 2 stand-up review was completed on November 18th, and it was a good review. We do not have the official letter yet, but we are anticipating receiving it soon. Other than that, I can introduce the uh, slideshow for you. Keith Bassett with Synergy, NDS. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, almost. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Keith Bassett, FMIT Synergy. Um, this morning I'm going to review not just Weems Hospital stuff, but everything that FMIT has done since the hurricane for the county. Um, Tell me it's working. There we go. All right. So, quick overview of what FMIT and Turnkey does. Um, the da impacts to the assets that you had damaged in emergency stabilization we did and accomplishments to this date. So what FMIT turnkey recovery program is, is we have like ride out teams that'll come before the storm, ride the storm out with you in house at your EOC. And then as soon as it's safe to get out, start evaluating damages to help identify what the county would need to get critical uh, infrastructures back up and running. Example would be putting generators at lift stations to keep a, a septic system or a sewer system running. Uh, as we know, Michael was the most powerful storm to hit the Panhandle, first strongest to hit the U.S. with uh, sustained winds of 161 miles an hour, caused uh, roughly $4 million in damages to uh, insured assets that we managed through turnkey recovery program, but it's not including all of the damages that occurred. Those are just the amount to the turnkey pr projects that we did. We had uh, people come out do damage assessments at locations it's real time i know aaron was getting bombarded with emails as damage assessments were being done they were identifying what was damaged at your assets and what needed to be done we had contractors pre-staged outside of the target zone and then as soon as we could get them in we had set up a big staging area in panama city where contractors were then sending out their rental equipment i know within uh, 48 hours of having this set up, we had over 100 generators out um, in the Panhandle region to get critical things up and running to get these cities and municipalities back up and going, including Franklin County. Some of our projects that we completed, uh, the recycling center, uh, we reskinned the whole building, new roof, new roof over the uh, awning where they would store the plastics. A uh, couple of trailers out there at the Sheriff's Department, we replaced one entirely. And then also we performed all the interior repairs on the classroom trailer as well. Those are complete. And then Weems Hospital, emergency stabilization, roughly $350,000 was spent on emergency services to secure the roof temporarily, get it dried out, get it cleaned up from inside from all the damage that occurred. And then we brought in the temporary facilities, which included um, a food trailer, office, sleep trailers, uh, laboratory. That way we could keep Weems Hospital open while we did the roof project, which kept employees working, kept the health services here in the community that needed to be here. Uh, we are about finished with that project, I anticipate by the 13th being 100% complete with the project and everybody moves back into the hospital with where they need to be. Some of the temporary facilities will still be here as there's different lead times for the, man for the company to come and get those out. And as soon as I can give a firm date to them, then they schedule it. Most of them are seven or five to seven days. One of them I know I have a 14 day lead time on. But as soon as we get everybody back in the hospital, we'll start making those calls and getting everything tore down and act like we were never here. And you'll have a new roof on the hospital. All right, work completed to date were $2.8 million. Um, out of that, none of that has been a cost and cure to the county. The only cost that is a cure to the county will be the name storm deductibles, which are uh, Reverse, reimbursable by FEMA, which yep. Aaron is working with FEMA on. Uh, your total deductibles was $174,953. It's just um, under your policy, you have an extra expense endorsement, which does not go to the limit of the actual location. So Weems Hospital was insured for $3 million which meant you had three million, up to $3 million to do repairs. Your extra expense endorsement, though, was where we were able to get all of these temporary facilities in 
in order to keep the hospital open, keep people working, keep the health services here. And we spent roughly $600,000 out of that extra expense endorsement. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I have a comment. I'd like to make a comment. I've received, received uh, public comments from several different people as to the amount of work y'all are doing, working, they said seven days a week. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Late, real late in the evening. I mean, they, they, the, the public is, whether you know it or not, the public does keep an eye on what's going on. They commented to me that they were, you guys put in some hard hours, worked a lot of, you know, extra time trying to get this done in, in the, in the uh, expedite the project. And I want you to know that we appreciate that and let you know that the public brought that to my attention. So it's not only the commissioners that are aware of what you're doing it's the public itself is watching what you're doing you've done a, a really good job and we all appreciate that yes sir nick harper was the uh day-to-day -day field pm out there and yeah. he was staying on top of the contractors making sure everything was going in a smooth transition from one phase to the other and he's done an excellent job at that for us thank you Aaron. I just want to say we are extremely impressed and grateful, you know, to have Synergy on our team uh, because we just could not have done it. You know, they went out and they did damage assessments of every single damage location, and we were able to use that with our FEMA um, project orders as well because they actually assessed the damage, gave us an estimate of value, how much, you know, repairs were needed, and described the damage in every single location, and that happened within... I would say about, you know, probably two weeks after the storm, we had every single location somebody had visited. Um, and we don't have the staff for it, so we don't know how we would have done it without you. Uh, just to lay it on some more commissioners, I, I got to say, Keith, if you remember when we first talked about this, the first few meetings we had, it was like, oh, my God, this will never work. This is the worst thing in the world. And I waited about a month and a half, and I started a asking, and everybody was like, oh, it's wonderful. So I don't know what magic you do, son, but whatever it is you do, you did a very good job. We because got some neck, that's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I got the nurses and, 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 and the emergency room doctors telling me they went from it'll never work to, oh, it's fine. We love it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Just as long as it keeps working, I'm with well, it. So thank you all so much. They've all worked hard. They worked hard yeah. together. So. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. I live on street. Well, I live on 9th Street. I, didn't, I ain't come on your job site. Like, I don't mess with nobody on the job site. So. <laughs> but I could hear, I could hear the noise. Y'all was steady working. the off? <laughs> Y'all was steady working. <laughs> Y'all were getting, I, I know you were getting something done. I know you were getting something done. Go ahead. I just, uh, I was impressed to read that you stayed with that hospital during the storm. You were on site during that time, and I thought that was impressive as well to just see what the damage was that was occurring and be able to follow through to the end product. And just uh, hang in there with us as we consider what we're going to do for a new healthcare facility. Uh, your thinking and your expertise and everything will be certainly welcomed. Thank you. Yes. Y'all keep up the good work. Yes, Thank sir. You. Done a good job. Thank you all. Okay, now next will be the EMS director, Mr. Richard Lewis. Good morning, Commissioners. Richard Lewis, EMS director. I want right. to give a uh, quick update on the status of our fleet and updates. Right now, we are currently running three primary trucks. Our tr two of our primary trucks are the 2015 and 2016 models. Both of them have surpassed uh, 150,000 miles. Uh, our two backup trucks, which one of them was a primary, we got the new truck. Uh, it is now a backup. We have a 2000 model and a 2008 model that have both surpassed 200,000. Uh, we are averaging about 5,000 miles per month per primary truck and about two to 3,000 per month per backup truck. Uh, as of November 18th, our 2019 Ford F-350 <coughs> was uh, put into service, the one that we ordered about a year ago. Uh, we have it up and running and it is stationed here in Appalachia. It is updated with all the new uh, equipment and all the new standards. Uh, we, that being said, we have a lead time about nine to 12 months from the day we order a truck. Uh, and we need to definitely keep that in mind uh, pending the outcome of the USDA grant that we're waiting on. So 
Do you have any questions or concerns? That's that new one out there. Yes, sir. It's cool. It is. That's yeah, nice. The guys really like it. That, that lift. Yeah, that, that new lift system is a, a definitely a good safety for the crew and the patient. Yep. It is. That's way Ellen finds the proper trailer. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, Richard, could, is there any way you could possibly find out an answer for us, maybe at a future meeting, what it would take and if it's possible for us to add that same kind of lift system to all of our primary trucks if they don't currently have it? Uh, yes, sir. I'll look into it and I'll give you an update okay. on the feasibility of that. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else got anything for me? Okay, keep up the good work. Right, thank keep you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> keep Franklin County safe. Yeah, man. All right. Next on the agenda be Miss Miss Angela West. Community action. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. My name is Angela Webster. I work for Capital Area Community Action Agency. Um, and our agency has assisted with the uh, Lime Rock fire survivors. Um, we originally provided temporary housing for 22 of the survivors. And of those 22, we only have seven still currently in camper trailers, which I think is very good. Um, we help five of those families secure permanent housing. And we have 12 pending cases. Of the 12 pending cases, four of these families are CDG, CDBG eligible, contingent upon mortgage. Go ahead. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> contingent upon um, modifications to mortgages as well as securing land in compliance with the grants. We have five of these families who are interested in keeping their campers. However, we are awaiting appraisals before that can happen. And that's basically all I have. Do you guys have any questions for me? Now, when you say they're interested in keeping them, what, what do you mean by To transfer titles to receive a camper as replacement for loss of residence, being that campers were what they originally had prior to the fire. Okay. Go ahead. Question, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I don't understand because you can't live in a camper on a one acre lot in Franklin County. Now, some of them have accepted a trailer but moved into an RV park. That is correct. Is that what these five people are intended to do? They have to. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. That is a requirement. Yes. Okay. That is a requirement that they have to show that they have legal space, space that is legally permitted for campers. Okay. I just want to make sure they knew they couldn't live on oh, one yes, acre sir. lot in a camper. They're going I to stress to that to them. Park. Okay, mm -hmm. I just, just want to put that out there for the public. <clears throat> That's the only question I have. Anybody got anything else for Ms. Webster? Uh, I don't have a question. I just want to ask uh, Ms. Webster to stand by when Ms. Ms. Belcher comes up here uh, right behind her just in case we get into a discussion of, you know, who goes where? Let's put it that way. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I do have a question, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, first, Mr. Chair, uh, Parrish, thank you for asking that question because I had the same question in mind about the legal use of the campers. But I would also like to ask, uh, and maybe we can get it in a future report, I, I know that we're getting closer to everybody being helped, which is what the, I believe the intent of this board was. Thank you for the part that y'all played in that. Uh, but I, I think we need to make sure kind of where we're at with your organization. In other words, is there $20,000 left in donated funds? Or And I know it's going to be cleared up as all the rest of this is done. We're not trying to completely end it, but I think this board needs to know for sure where we're at, and that's not on the report we have. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Keep up the good work, Ms. Webster. Yes, Y'all doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. 
Just hang around just in case the one of the sisters fail to. Next on the agenda will be CDBG Administrator, Ms. Ms. Debbie Belt. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I have you. You let have my report, you. right? Yeah. Let me get your name for the record. Please. Okay, Debbie Belcher, uh, the county's CDBG administrator, consultant. Okay. Go ahead. So um, you have your my report in your agenda packet. Um, I have some action items. One is uh, to approve CDBG funding for Annie and William Banks. And, uh, to purchase a new home for, from Ironwood Homes at Perry. The uh, purchase amount is $76,335.56. Um, and we would also need uh, authorization to include up to 500 if necessary. I don't expect there to be any unknown items, but just in case. And also for the um, Doc Stanton recording fee. Okay, now this one of the replacement in the fire. Yes, sir. This is actually the one that the board approved doing. Uh, they have one of the, sh it was not a sheriff's home, but it's the same type of home that was donated by a church. And um, that home will go to Jason Millender as approved by the board about a month ago. Uh, his home burned, and they will take care of all the setup costs. And it's already, they have the utilities, everything good to go. Um, and it's it, there was already a home there. They own the property. That all the arrangements are made, and so um, they will take care of all of that. Okay, well now they're gonna be in the right zoning. Yes, sir. Well, the, the zoning's okay. Um, the utilities are there. The um, um, that they have the funds ready. Pri the, the owners themselves will pay all the costs. Second move. Got Second. a motion on the floor by Commissioner Massa. Second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. And now we have uh, two homeowner applications um, for approval. This is not approving the contract. This is as I usually do, I, as I always do, I bring you the applications that appear eligible. Um, Kathy Hill. 773 Buck Street. Um, she is still living in her mobile home, but it was damaged and it's in bad condition. And um, she recently completed a divorce and got the quit claim deed from, from her ex-husband. So she is the owner. She has title. She's good to go in that regard. Um, I have submitted the environmental review, do not have it yet, but we did go ahead and put her home in the bid package that we recently did. Um, the same one that we got the results for, for um, the banks. Uh, we, we included several homes in that bid package. So when we get the environmental clearance, I'll bring that back to you for approval of the funding. But I just wanted uh, board action to approve her application. Second. All right, I got a motion on the floor <coughs> by Commissioner Master, second by Commissioner Jones. I want a little discussion. On, I want to ask. A I, I got to ask a lawyer a question. On a situation like this, they got to the vote <coughs> in order for us not to be liable for buying two trailers. I we won't have to buy two trailers. Let me make sure I understand the facts because I'm hearing this live for the first, the first <laughs> time this morning. I mean, it was a husband and wife. They got mm -hmm. it to both. Mm -hmm. So she going to get a trailer now. Can, I'm trying to see, uh, what, can he come back later on and say he need a trailer? Well, I mean, we can't stop him from coming back and asking. It doesn't mean we have to say yes. But so the facts are the husband and wife had a residence that was otherwise qualified within the burn area. Yes. Married at the time of the fire. They've since moved on and got a divorce. Mm -hmm. Have you had this conversation with them that they're not entitled to two houses, they're entitled to one house? Yes. And um, he, I don't think, has resided there for some time. So I don't think he was residing there at the time of the fire. So he wasn't displaced. Uh, and they they had other property and they settled it, they split it that way so she is 
the owner of this property and he's the owner of other property. Okay, the property that she got out of the divorce proceeding is the property that's w located within the fire. Right, and it's zone. the and it's the one that had their mobile home on it has it on it and the other did not. So uh, but they that was their settlement in the divorce. Commissioner, I have a, a, a paucity of Darth, I mean, a lack of a lot of information here, but based on what I'm hearing, it uh, sounds like they resolved this matter between themselves during the divorce as to who's going to get the property that is qualified to receive the free trailer. Uh, if he comes back and, and tries to seek a second trailer, then we'll just have to deal with that when it comes up. But it doesn't sound to me like he's got much of a leg to stand on. But again, there's not a lot of facts on the table right now for me to look at. Okay. Uh, which item are we talking about? Item number two? Uh, that, yes, the, uh, it, it is the second page at the top, Kathy Hill. Is this Mayor Lou Thomas we're talking about? No, it's okay. Kathy Hill. Kathy okay, Hill. I thought, okay. Mayor, Mayor Lou's next. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think you voted on Kathy Hill yet. Okay, that's, so that's, that's they got a vote. That's what I have. Yeah, you got a motion and a second. We already voted. Okay. Yeah, we got the vote. Okay. Y'all ready? In a more, in a more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes none. And the next one is Mary Louise Thomas. She was formerly um, Shiver. Um, she and her ex-husband were already divorced at the time of the fire. Um, unfortunately, their divorce settlement did not split the property ownership. So she is remarried, living in a camper with her husband and infant grandson that, she, that they have custody of. And um, so I'm recommending that we proceed. Um, there is no ideal situation for security uh, on this with her she I mean I think she is owner of the property although her ex-husband owns it is with her so I know mortgages are not com normally done with one party and not the other um, yeah. and so that that is uh, that's <laughs> something to consider uh, the other issue is if you uh, I don't know if we could uh, record a mortgage that says that it is uh, security for her interest in the property and that uh, it does not encumber him. I, d I don't know if we can just word it differently. You know, the, the fact is we're not thinking that this is uh, going to be a situation where we're going to recover funds, but, you know, just to keep in keeping with your policy. Um, the other, uh, another option that the county could consider is um, when people buy mobile homes and have a mortgage, it is commonplace for the title to go to the mortgage, ho mortgage holder, in this case the county, and, um, you, and then the title at, is then transferred to the occupant, the owner at the time the mortgage is, is uh, completed yep. so that that is an option that you have um, you yep. know it, it would be uh, you would hold title on the actual mobile home you wouldn't place it against the property Mr. Yeah. I, less than ideal is a, a mild statement I think um, so they got a divorce they did not resolve the ownership of the property in the divorce nope okay what that would mean is if they own property as husband and wife, and I'll, again, I'm going to make that assumption that they mm -hmm. held title to, to the real property during the marriage as husband and wife, and they Correct. acquired title during the marriage, and then they got a divorce, and for whatever reason, they did not resolve the ownership to the title to the real property in the divorce. That means that he has an undivided one-half interest as a tenant in common, she has a one-half interest as a tenant in common. That, that's just the default legal result if you don't resolve the ownership of real estate uh, during a divorce. Um, you, you can have a situation like that happen. 
what you should do, you, the county should not take back what she's suggesting is, is you retain title to the trailer, take back a chattel mortgage on just the trailer itself and don't get a mortgage on the real property. My suggestion would be different from that because if you own the title to it, then you're responsible for whatever happens on the inside. Um, you know, if someone gets hurt, someone gets killed, I mean, that's just, that, that's something I do not recommend that you do. Um, <coughs> What you can do, if, if I don't know what the relationship between these people are, I'm not even sure that I know who these people are, but there are many times in a real estate transaction where the husband and the wife or the two owners, the joint owners, they will both sign the mortgage, but only one person signs the promissory note. So in this case, you could have the ex-wife and the ex-husband sign the mortgage, have the, the current owner of the property, the ex-wife, sign the promissory note, which means that the gentleman himself doesn't have any obligation to repay the note. That's how things would be handled in a commercial transaction. And as, as routinely done, I close the, uh, many of those types of transactions every year. Here, you've got a ship mortgage. It's how much? CDBG. It would be CD a CDBG. For how many years? Uh, ten. Ten? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they, they currently have housing that they're in now? They're in a camper. The, the Mary Louise... Thomas is in a camper with her husband and She's baby grants. Yes. Okay. And what have they done to try and resolve the ownership with the ex-husband, his one-half interest? She has not been able to communicate with him, and um, so I don't know. I mean, she's been the one paying the taxes and yeah, that doesn't all that. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as welfare, the grandson, I've, I've a encouraged her to try to you know, appeal to that sense, and that hasn't happened. So. Yeah, that's why I got out of family law. Because yeah. Because of these types of situations. <laughs> uh, it's horrible. What, what you could do, I mean, and again, less than ideal is an understatement, but of the options available to you, you do not want a chattel mortgage where the county continues to hold title to the property, which is the, the mobile home. Um, my suggestion as a default is let's go back and make another attempt at getting a, a proper mortgage. If not, then we can always have her mortgage, her one half interest, your worst case scenario. If you should ever foreclose on a, on a CDBG mortgage or a ship loan, which you frankly you've never done, uh, you would end up being a half owner with whoever this uh, ex-spouse is and there are remedies to take care of divesting yourselves of title so the county would not be stuck with the property you would basically put it on the courthouse steps and sell it so you do have options and remedies available so my suggestion is go on with a, a standard mortgage signed by the ex-wife apparently maybe or maybe not by the ex-husband and move on but, Mr. Chairman mm -hmm. ain't there a requirement of this program that you retain title to that property well, she, she you can't hold one person to one standard and then another standard for somebody. I mean, we got rules and regulations mm -hmm. you got to follow, and uh -huh. we cannot go through and make exceptions to the rules for every individual that wants to. I mean, I don't understand how you do that. Well, she is. I do is agree the with the attorney that I don't want that trailer title to this county because if somebody. Uh -huh. Lord forbid the thing catch fire and burn everybody up. Well, the mm -hmm. county's, that's the county's trailer. I don't want to go down that path. Mm -hmm. uh, Myself and, and attorney advisors are the same, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying we cannot go through each one of these things and make exceptions to every rule that's been in the rule book. How, how do we? How, how you? How do you say you're treating people fair when you do that? Well, I, she I, I is an owner. I she is one of going. the owners. I mean, I thought not, some of these people were turned down because they did not own the property. Some of them didn't own it at all. That's she, what I'm talking she about. And her, she and her ex-husband are the owners. Well, so, they need to get that settled. Well, If they're not willing to settle it for one of them to have a, a place to live, that, you know, that don't make much sense either if he's not been there and don't live there. I mean, I just don't know how you make exceptions to every rule. I mean, I, how does people get treated fairly and equitably when you do that? I thought that's why we drafted the rules before we started the program. And you had to comply with the rules. You got to pay your taxes. Got to be paid on the property. There's a set of rules there that you have to buy with. And you, if I look through this list you give me here, uh, some of these properties got eight years behind in taxes. Well, they don't qualify. Correct. At that time. Yes. So you can't make exceptions for every person's different. I mean, I I don't understand where we go and how we get there. 
if we don't, if everybody's not, you know, one of these people you got on here, excessive trash in the yard. Well, that was one of the rules. Mm -hmm. You had to clean it up. You can only have one home per acre. I mean, there, this, there's a list of rules that goes along with this program. Mm -hmm. And it seems like to me that every time something comes up, somebody's requesting that we change the rules. You can't. People aren't treated fairly and equitably by changing the rules over and over and over again. These are the rules. You know what the rules are. You should follow the rules and come into compliance, and then you're entitled to participate in the program. I don't understand. I, I just don't understand, I guess. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't understand. If you got to set a rule and you got to get all the junk off the property and you can't have one mobile home per acre, not 10 sheds and four campers and all that. If you got all that, then you don't comply with the rules of the program. I mean, I don't know how else to, I, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it, I don't know. I don't know what the rest of the board's thinking, but that's the way I see it. We can try to see if she can make one more attempt to uh, get, um, say, a quick clean, quit claim from her ex or um, his agreement to sign the mortgage. I have done um, mortgages in the past where you have what's called the non-occupant owner. Um, and, and in those cases, what we say is that the uh, default of the mortgage would be if the occupying owner uh, moves out or transfers or whatever, then the, uh, in other words, that the, uh, the person who's not occupying it doesn't qualify the assistance. Uh, it happens sometimes where like there's um, siblings, for example, might own a property and you do the mortgage that says um, that that person is uh, agreeing to the mortgage on the property, and but they're not the one that qualified for the assistance. Well, I mean, it's like the, the scenario Mr. Lockyer brought up a while ago. Where's the husband going to come back? Well, they settled that in their divorce. She got the piece of property that, that had the trailer on it. Mm -hmm. He got the piece of property that never had a trailer on it. So in my opinion, he don't qualify for the program because the piece of property he's got never had a trailer to start with during the fire. Right. So he don't qualify. That would be my rationale of that particular situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, they that's need true. to work that out on their own. If he wants to give her that piece of property, then they can figure out how much she owes him for his half of that property when she gets the settlement uh, that's supposedly coming down the line and she pays him X amount of dollars out of that settlement for that piece of property he gave her. It's kind of simple. You, know, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? She's done married do. and living with another man. That ain't for the county to get into, but that's they need to get that stuff together and not make exceptions to every rule. I mean, not hard to figure out. But that's not for the board to do, you know. I understand that, I'm just saying. The best thing to do is keep it real. <laughs> Go by the rule. Go by the rule. Well, that's why this was not one of the first ones presented <laughs> when you we know, first got started. We gonna it coming up again to us. Mm -hmm. It coming up again. It's gonna. Hey, you let such and such one do mm -hmm. such and such. Yeah. Well, I, again, the only reason I'm presenting this is because she is. It's not like she doesn't own it. She does own it, but she has it ownership split, shared you ownership. You need to go back and tell them to work that out. He sell her his half of that property, and they sign a note saying when we get our settlement. You get X amount of dollars because you did on half of this. You know what I'm saying? And work that out mm -hmm. on the own. Him sign over the quick claim deed, and she's the sole owner. Now she's in compliance of the program. That's not for the county to change the rules every time something comes up. Go along, we're going around in a big old circle, like Mr. Locker said. Mr. Locker said, well, you wouldn't do it for me, but you did it for them. So they come back, and, I, and it just turns into a mess. Is he living in these Park? No. He doesn't even live in this county anymore. He know the way back, though. <laughs> 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 
It's not my district. It's yeah. William and what y'all think? Uh, what y'all want to do? Well, let's see if she can get a hold of it. Get her name because we got more of some stuff coming up too. All right, let's try to kind of work on that one a little more. Yeah. Okay. The, okay. The direction of the board is try try again with the uh, resolution of the ownership. Maintain right. the standards. Yeah. Okay. Give right. her a copy of the rules and she can give it to him, and then y'all go from there. All right. Well, she knows she knows what the rules are. So, um, okay. All right. Okay. And I think uh, that was it for what I had uh, for you today. Um, when we get environmental clearance, um, I'll come back for um, Kathy Hill, and uh, I may have another. There's another one that is uh, an ownership situation um, that I'm not bringing to you yet. That um, they need to clarify it, just like we talked about this other one. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The other one I, I'm not even close to bringing to okay. you, but it, it is in the works uh, with their ownership. She's a widow, and blah blah blah. So uh, we're, we're working on that one. Um, just going to let you know if there's anybody else on the horizon um, as far as that, that uh, ownership transfer. I, I think that was the only one at this particular time she had uh, who's an owner-occupant. Okay. Next on the Okay. Next on the agenda will be. He does, but he's on a call with FEMA. Okay. But I don't think the clerk has a report. Where are we at? Where are we at? Mm -hmm. Clerk of the Court. Ms. Marcy John. Alrighty. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda will be Mr. Alan Peel. Mr. Pierce has one action item, but I think he's on a conference call with Clay with FEMA. So if you, you want don't mind, do you want go me to yeah. go? It would matter. He should pop back in in a second, and I'll okay, come back yeah. to him. Well, we'll go next on the agenda B, Mr. Michael Marone. Commissioner, if, if, if you would, uh, Miss Miss Doris Evans is here. She's our SBA uh, point person in the county. She was on, she planned to be here for public comments just to give you a three minute update. However, she said they closed the road between here and Panama City, so she missed public comments. Is there any way you could, she just wants to give you an update on SBA in, in the county, what they're doing. Is that? Come on up. We might as well get Mr. Pierce all the while. So we give Ms. Evans three minutes on SBA. That's small business. Hello, and thank you very much um, for giving me the three minutes. My name is Doris Evans. I'm with the SBA Office of Disaster Assistance. And I've been assigned to do outreach in Franklin County and three contiguous counties as a result of Hurricane Dorian that came through this area from August 28th through September the 9th. Uh, the governor of Florida requested disaster assistance and in regards to uh, damages that were done. Uh, what was approved was a agency declaration with 26 counties and 19 contiguous counties for economic assistance only, working capital. And Franklin County is one of the primary counties. That's why I'm here reaching out to the businesses and nonprofits that may have been affected. Uh, hotels, restaurants, anyone, any business or maybe some of the nonprofit uh, organizations in the community may have been impacted by it. If so, then they're eligible to borrow from the SBA, our Federal uh, Disaster Low Interest Loan Program, uh, Working Capital. The deadline is actually August 13th, so businesses and nonprofits do have quite a bit of time to assess what those damages are. And uh, as part of my outreach, um, I've visited your offices and I've left information for you and also reaching out to the chambers and to any other organizations here in Franklin County as well as the city of Apalachicola. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, that's a mouthful. Um, in, in regards to getting that message out you know, to you regarding the disaster assistance. And businesses that were affected, they can borrow up to $2 million uh, to help them get back on their feet. And once again, it's strictly for working capital, not for physical um, damages, only working capital. And in addition to the 26 counties, there were 19 contiguous counties, I think I said that. And in addition to uh, Franklin County, I'm also reaching out my other contiguous counties are Guff, Liberty, Wakakula, and uh, let's see, did I say that Please right? Call out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I'm butchering everything. Okay, so those were uh, you know my counties that I was reaching out, and Liberty. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Evans, what is the average interest rate on an SBA loan? Uh, the, the average interest rate is 4% on this particular business loan. The economic injury loan, it's 4%. You can get up to 30 years to pay it back. Okay. We appreciate the info, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me, and Michael, thank you for working me in. No problem, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, next on the agenda. And they're still on that call, so I'll, I'll go to my report. Hopefully, they'll be through. Mr. Um, Michael Marone. All right, commissioners, I'm close to the back. I'm item number 17. I'll start off with 17A, my action items. Uh, uh, attached to the agenda packet is a career source modification to work site agreement. The original agreement that allows the placement of career source funded workers within different county departments to assist with Hurricane Michael recovery has expired. The modification will extend the end date of the agreement to September 30th, 2020, or until the funds are no longer available. I see board action to authorize the chairman's signature on the career source modification to work site agreement. So moved. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Paris, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, pass unanimous. The next item at a uh, B, at a recent meeting, the board authorized the installation of a security access system control at the Olin Buddy Ward Seafood Landing Park and requested that I get additional quotes for security and camera CCTV systems for any of our parks, boat ramps, or other locations that have been burglarized or are open to vandalism and burglary. This action was based on an attempt to enter, the, to enter and burglarize the museum building at the Seafood Landing Park. I received two CCTV security system proposals for the park that I'm currently reviewing. And if the board is willing, I would ask for approval to spend up to $5,700 to purchase equipment and have that uh, equipment installed at the park. I should complete my review by week's end and would like to have the vendor order the equipment prior to the board's next meeting. The project costs will be paid from the Parks and Recreation Department. Board action to authorize the 57 up to up to 5700 for the purchase and installation of a CCTV security system at the landing park. Second. 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 Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. That passed unanimous. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Real quick. What about the camera system in Abercrombie? That'll be next, Commissioner. I'm trying to do them one by one as we get along. I'll, I'll say this I mean, to you. We've been waiting for over a year. I know. The Ac Abercrombie I'm ready for something to move. The board done voted to approve the funds to do it, so I'm okay. ready for something to move out of there. I'll get it done. I'll have to come back with additional boring uh, cause, but yeah, I'll get it done, Commissioner. It is what it is. Yes, sir. I'm ready for that project to move. Okay. We're working that next. All right. Uh, C. City Carroll has requested a meeting to discuss the board's request to have each city contribute 3,500 this budget year and 7,000 next budget year, along with re redirecting all animal control calls, calls to their local police departments. Once their police officer responds to the call, he will determine if the county's animal control officer is needed. This request is based on the county's animal control officer spending uh, ample time in both cities, so much time in both cities, that the board was forced to add a part-time officer to its department. In addition, the animal control officers are responding to calls that are actually human, uh, I keep using that term, but human conflict issues that results in threat to the animal control officer. Are there any specific items the board would like me to discuss at this meeting? The meeting is scheduled for Friday, December 6th, here in my office at 10 o'clock, and the city of Apalachicola is also invited to attend this meeting. Well, I just tell them, in my opinion, you know, just tell them, hey, you can either get a boat or get the own office. As I understand it, Commissioner, yeah. what you want is a, is a, mm -hmm. a MOU 
that basically states to, to, to continue with the current coverage, not to extend or improve or change the coverage in any way, the current coverage, that they contribute this amount of money. More importantly, their police departments respond first and then call out our animal control officers. That was, that's my understanding, and I want to make sure we're still on, on the same page with that. Yeah, we're on the same, okay. It's like, all I'm saying is, we made, we wrote them a letter, we told them what we was offering. If they don't want it, let them get their own. That's my opinion. You know, we got four more up here, but that's, 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 that's how I feel about it. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to comment on this. I think the original discussion, Mike, was we hired another officer because we were getting so many calls from within the two municipalities. Mm -hmm. If each city contributed $3,500, that's $7,000. That ain't even gonna pay for part time because no, the county employee starts at twenty five thousand. Yeah, the part time was fourteen thousand, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. I mean, so I I don't see how they can hire their own officer and provide this service within each city for that amount of money. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see what the big deal is. But I have been on calls with Fonda and some of his officers here in Appalach, and they'll pick one dog up, put it in the truck and go for another one that's running up and down the road that, that citizens have complained about. And while they're doing that, the people gather around, open the damn gum gate, and let the first dog out. Oh. And cussing and berating the, off, the county officers, that's the reason we would like the police to respond. Yep. But nobody responds, and these officers are not, they, they can't arrest nobody. I mean, they're out there in harm's way. And I think that the officers of the two municipalities ought to respond and help defuse the situation. Mm -hmm. Rather than the officers having to take all the verbal abuse and everything else, threats to the life and everything else about messing with people's <coughs> dogs, but because people love the dogs about as much as they do the children. And I understand that. And that's why the police department don't want to get involved. Because these people are so adamant about their dogs and their pets and what they're going to do to you if you put your hands on them and all of this. I've been there. And if you don't believe it, somebody needs to ride with them and listen to the kind of abuse that our animal control officers receive. But you know, if it's, it's up to the city, but that needs to be made a point that you can't, cannot, if they decide not to participate and we go back to our original ordinance where we only respond outside the municipalities, then I don't think they can hire their own officer, truck, they don't have a place to put the animals once they pick them up. But the county is still helping. We're paying more than half of the salaries of these people. Plus, we're going to have to provide them a truck. Plus, we got to pay for the gas. And then they go out there on the side of the road and get cussed out. It ain't fair. And I, I think it's a very nominal fee to, to have this service provided to you by the county. Because if you try to provide it yourself, you're not going to be able to do it. I mean, so if they don't want to do it, I want to make a motion to direct the attorney to draft an ordinance up and go back to what we used to do. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put that in the form of a motion. Now, I don't want this ordinance adopted until you have this meet, but I want him to be prepared and not push it down the road another two or three months. Okay. I wanna direct, in my motion, direct the attorney to, to draft the ordinance. And if we can't get no participation or one city wants to participate <clears throat> and the other one don't, then we'll provide that service for the city that wants to participate. But these officers have to respond. They don't want to do it because it causes human conflict for them too. Mm -hmm. You know, but yep. you're putting our county officers and yep. our county animal control officers yep. in, in harm's way because they have no authority to make people back up and quit berating them and quit cussing them, quit threatening them. So, you know, I'm gonna make that in the form of a motion. I don't know if I'll get a second on it, but I'm gonna make that in the form of a motion. Would you so, add to yeah. it, if you will, I have add on Make sure that the city, both city, get a couple of uh, whoever they'll know what's going on. They're supposed to be at this meeting with him. I know, but, but yeah, boy. Mr. Chairman. But I'm, I mean, you know, if they, they we'll have to have a public hearing to adopt the ordinance. Yeah. Then they can come and say what they want to say. But okay, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, go ahead. Um, 
I want to keep everything just exactly as it, as it is in this conversation. Michael, advise me, do you think that the Humane Society might have any interest in amending the animal control officer activities? Now, I realize there's two different entities there, but do you, do you because they're, they are so bonded in many ways anyway with our animal control department, do you see any, is there any thoughts on that? I don't see any, um, well, I think that, like you said, Commissioner, two separate agencies. Yep. One is government, one is non-governmental. Yep. So I, I don't see, especially over the animal control uh, uh, officer, because he's bound by the ordinance, okay. if I'm not mistaken, yep. and, um, and and rules. So okay. no, I don't, okay. to, to short answer to your question. Okay, thank you. Got a motion on the floor. I have something for discussion, Mr. Chairman, please. Uh, Michael, when you're having the meeting with the city of Carebell, I think we also need to make sure, if, if the board's agreeable to this, that they understand that when we're talking about animal control, we're talking about domestic animals. Yes, so that's important. We're not oh, talking so about because just, we're talking about dogs and cats, and we're talking about pets, we're talking about domestic animals. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, good. Because I, I know that there are some situations I just don't think we need to put any of our officers in. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, with this, it, I'm, I'm thinking I'm remembering correctly. I know we're asking the city to respond with officers, but in Incorporated Franklin County, we're going to have the sheriff office responding to calls as well. I think it should be the same, yes. Sir. Because it's not, yeah, it's not just people in the cities are going to have problems with their pets. It's going to be yeah. all over. So, yeah. If that wasn't in there, I think it needs to be added. So okay. Right. Well, go for the goose, go for the gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, y'all, y'all through discussing. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. There ain't no more discussion, ain't no more discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All the vote, that pass unanimous. Step C, uh, we're up to D now. Uh, the first census complete count committee meeting was held on Friday, November 10th at 1.30 p.m. Representatives from the city of Apalachicola, Franklin County Schools, and different committee members were part of, I didn't say that correctly, of Ms. Ramirez's U.S. Census Bureau <coughs> training presentation. There was a lot of val valuable information along with eye-opening <sighs> questions and answer segment that showed how important the census count is to the county and to the school district funding. There was this misconception that the school goes by the number of students and that we found out that's not necessarily the case. The census rules that funding too. What is needed on the committee is members from different unincorporated areas of the county that could assist with focusing on areas where residents did not complete the online census survey. So we're all going to get this little card in the mail that you go online, you put in your PIN number, and that's how you fill out the survey. Am I using the right word, Pat? Survey? So now if you don't do that, here comes a knock on your door. And so we need people in each area to tell us how to focus on that group of people that we don't think did not go online and do it. How can we get to them? Is there any, can we hold uh, days at the library that we could use the computers at the library to encourage these people to come and file? Because of course, census equals money. <coughs> um, you're probably contacted by the chair, Ms. Pat O'Connell, about suggesting a member from your district to serve. If you have someone to suggest today, let me know at the end of today's meeting, or you can just contact uh, Pat herself. Okay. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. on this particular issue, Mike, is there any ways to run something in the paper so, yes. that, so that the citizens of Franklin County know how important it is that they fill out this information. Yes. Public service announcements on the radio, blah, 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 and lets them know that federal dollars are attributed to this census count. It's very important that they respond to yes. it. As a matter of fact, a, there are ads that uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ramirez, that Evelyn was, was going to send us that we could then in turn spread yeah. throughout to the newspaper, to the radio station. Uh, well, why don't she do it? Evelyn? She's the representative. No, that's what you have. You could, What's it called? Your complete count committee. That's what we're for. That's the steering committee. What, Each is, county, what, is, what does she do? Is, she goes to like, what is it, 12 different counties, I believe. I can't remember the number. And she, she trains, she trains the committee to, to, to do <laughs> all this work the in the resident. county. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. So this is what you need to do. <laughs> yep. If you don't, you're going to lose federal dollars. Yeah, basically. In, in the store. In the store. 
And so at some point, we're got, the steering committee will approach the board for a small, uh, most of it will go for advertising, a small budget, nominal fee. I, no, don't look at me like that, Commissioner. For? Yes, Commissioner, that we have to pay. What's, okay, anyway. See, Mr. Chairman. I, 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 I use. I understand. David. Hey, Dave. Can I we just had supplement? Benefit, we had to pay the call. Yeah, I and think. I think, I'll say this, I think they said the best multiplier is 50 cents per resident, correct? And so the last time we had 11,000 something. Like, yeah, she would have looked at the yeah. attorneys like whatever. But yeah. So we have to come up with $6,500 or $6,000? I would say about five. Yeah. Well, up to. I love to use this term up to. <laughs> and we use it to help with advertising, maybe banners, you know, yeah. uh, T-shirts. So people going around knocking on the door? Uh, the, the, the federal government will. Us government. Well, they say paying something. Yeah, the federal government did, yeah. During the, during the steering committee meeting, that we, this meeting here, and, I'll, and, and now, Pat, I think uh, Ms., Mr. Connell will, will, will appreciate what I said. I said we have to be very careful how we present this to the Board of County Commissioners because they will look at it as an unfunded mandate. We're and, so used to it. And so we're having that discussion right now. So now <laughs> you understand so what I was saying. So, uh, we, yes, Commissioner. It, the, 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 the federal government has basically shifted the cost to the local counties and the cities, too. Okay. We get a good deal. What you need, paper man? I, this is as a member of the Apalachicola. Give me your name for the record. Oh, David Adlerstein, member of the Apalachicola yeah. Census Committee. All right. I just want to supplement Michael's report. Appalach, we have one. Um, the chairman is Pam Richardson. I'm on it. Barry Hand is on it. Um, a number of other people. And we've met a couple times, and the we're trying to coordinate in the um, around a middle of April and March and April. A at Holy Family, we're going to set up some computers. We're going to have like a Census Counts Day program to get people to come out, and we'll assist them. And we're hopefully going to work with uh, the county committee to kind of get a joint statement out there and I'm going to be covering the paper. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do care of that one. Yes. Yeah, yes, they have their own committee also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, y'all all they'll be working together all. Yeah, we're hoping, hoping that everybody works as one. So the whatever limited money we have in the budget goes further with advertising and encouraging everybody to, to fill out this census. Okay. Uh, yeah. but, Mr. Chairman, Go ahead. Michael, I got an idea that maybe can help in my area anyway, unincorporated Franklin County. Mm -hmm. I know that it wouldn't be a problem with East Point Water and Sewer because I've already spoken to Mr. Billy Fuentes, our director, about it. Uh, anything, if you can come up with a wording of something that we can attach and put as a note on water bills or mm -hmm. something out, mm -hmm. we could be able to do that both in East Point and on St. George Island mm -hmm. with the water department on the island. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it's leading up to a time when we're going to have something set up at the libraries, mm -hmm. that, that might be a very cheap way to advertise. <coughs> yep, it is, Commissioner. We talked about that, and I, I'll just say it in this term. Pat has a guy for that. She basically has a guy for Good. quite a few of the, the, the seats on the steering committee, media, um, reaching out to the churches and different things. But, yes, using the water districts, it's a very good idea. We could tag something yep. in everybody's water bill. Yep. Good job. Mr. So, Chairman, well, I'm sorry. Just, what, this is worth fourteen thousand dollars per head that we count uh, that I read in your oh. statistic, Pat. So uh, it is very important to find everybody out there, and I think the, the five thousand dollars or so we may spend on advertising is a good deal compared to the benefits we'll get long term. Uh, my other two items are information items. This, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. One is about Duke Energy changing out all the light fixtures. They're, they're, actually, I like them. It's a couple years. We can perish. How long? They said we're going to do that two years ago, a year and a half. But anyway, well, the hurricane slowed things down. So, you know, that, that, uh, that's understandable. It's been a while, but listen to your second item there with media gone. They're saying more and more people are streaming and going to Hulu. So they're getting mm -hmm. away from the yep. cable companies. So for them to keep going, they have to up the charge. What they're going to do is push a bunch more people to go to them services. Yeah, right. it sounds counterproductive. You mean at the very end of the meeting yeah. is what, what the commissioner is referring to is that Mediacom sent a letter to the county about a rate increase, and their justification for the rate increase is that they're losing customers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't they're believe it. Them all. I thought you, when you lose customers, you lower your price, but, you know. Hey. They say the, the provider, I mean, the uh, 
stations are charging more yep. and they got less customers so they going up because they're losing customers going to direct tv and all these other streaming services and right. everything yep well you keep gouging the few that you got left they're gonna leave too uh, that's hey then you're gonna be out of business everybody have their own business model i guess but yeah okay and of course my last item is about the ad in the paper for the part-time uh, just let you guys know they are advertising for the part-time uh, library assistant over in Carbell. Speaking of which, I just want the board to know I'm, I'm not hiding or have your new library director locked away in a room somewhere. He just had a lot to accomplish here. He had to deal with the recommendations from the labor attorney and then actually learn all the day-to-day -day management stuff. So he'll be at one of your upcoming meetings. But he, he will be here along with uh, Kate from the library advisory board to officially introduce him to, to you guys. Actually, I have a meeting with him on Wednesday to see how things are going and we'll talk about a couple Great. of things. Has anybody up here seen him or met him? I haven't met him, but I need, I, I, we want to meet him. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you all want to meet him one-on-one -on -one before he comes to the board? Or? No, no, I, I don't want one-on-one -on -one because too much stuff gets started. Okay. But I'm going to say that lady was up here earlier and spoke, <laughs> said that, uh, talking about paying, you know, the county with the grants and all. Yeah. Her name wasn't even mentioned in this. It was the lady that just left. Oh, okay. I mean, on a public house. Her name wasn't even mentioned in it. Okay. All right, Commissioner, that is my report. And bear with me with the agenda. As you see, I'm continually tweaking. <laughs> As we go along, hopefully by the first of the year, we'll have a perfect one. Okay. Oh, right here. Alan. Yes, I'm sorry. He sneaked in right behind me, Commissioner. Okay, next, we'll go back to Mr. Pierce. Okay, thank you. Uh, I actually have three items, right, so I don't know how you're going to tweak things when I just keep bringing them up. But. How does that happen at 32? The, he don't let me leave the room. <laughs> okay, uh, item 16A is really the only thing left on my written report. At the last meeting, I had a long report regarding a study to be done in Alligator Point. The study would focus on alternatives to erosion and flood protection besides the standard beach inertia approach. The board voted to allow the ARPC to do the study. In the final hours of putting together the documents, the FDEP announced that their share of funds could not go directly to the ARPC. But it would have to come to the county. The total project is still $59,000, and FDP is paying $36,323. Uh, 36, All parties still want to see the project move forward, and the ARPC still wants to do the study, so I, I now recommend the board make an application to FDP, which I already have ready for you to sign, consistent with the scope of work the ARPC has already submitted for 36323 and that upon award of the grant, the board will allow the ARPC to do the work. The county will receive the FDP funds and then reimburse the ARPC when the work is done. As the board may recall, the FDEP work has to be done by April of next year, so this is a short-term project. The rest of the study will be funded by directly to the ARPC by the Cooperative Alabama Mississippi Sea Grant Program. So we only have to deal with the FDP study. So board action to submit a grant application to FDEP for 36363 to fund the study the ARPC, ARPC has agreed to do. So moved. Second. Got a motion on floor by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Thank you. And then I just have two minor items. One, uh, Clay Cannon and I were just on the phone uh, wheeling and dealing with FEMA uh, regarding Alligator Point. So we are making some headway as far as at least getting people uh, to pay attention to let's get something done. Uh, and we may be, I say maybe, we may be on Alligator Point tomorrow uh, trying to uh, look at the scope one more time to make sure we all understand what we're trying to build. Will they be bringing any money with them? <laughs> no, but this is a necessary step because the guy who's going to sign, who's coming, it may be the one okay. signing off on the scope of work. Okay. Yeah. Just to give you a short uh, story, basically when the theme was down here before, they had three scopes of work depending on the old Hermine storm, the, yep. some new Michael and some new Michael over here, and you had three different parts all going in different directions, and we had did a, one construction project putting it all together, and they're like, yep. well, you got three parts. No, we have one project. <laughs> anyway, we're, so we think we got that resolved. Good. We hope. My last item is just to carry on something we talked about last time briefly. Commissioner Paris had talked about the change of scope. The state of Florida was doing the water wars, and just to let you all know, last night on the Wall Street Journal, at least their online edition, they have a story that may be in their printed edition where Ricky Banks, our local Ricky Banks, is quoted in the Wall Street Journal uh, describing what is going on as far as his opinion on the water wars. And yes, the Wall Street Journal confirms what Commissioner Paris said. The state of Florida is approaching this now as a battle about ag, wa ag water, not urban water with Atlanta. They are now looking at the southern far farmers in Georgia as being part of the problem, which is a shift. You know, I don't know how it's going to play. So that, that apparently is what's happening. Okay. It's online. If anybody wants to read it. Okay, that's my report. Anybody got anything else from Mr. Pierce? Keep up the good work, sir. Okay. 
Next on the agenda will be Mr. Hewler. Just one action item for the board's consideration. This is a contract for the services to administer the HHRP grant. That is the Hurricane Housing uh, Recovery Program. Uh, it's approximately <coughs> $1.2 million. There is a essentially a 15% administrative uh, portion to this grant that will be used to pay both for the administration of the grant as well as certain costs associated with the grant. It became apparent shortly after we received the grant, even though the state had approved it in July, we only got the grant fairly recently. Uh, but after we received it, it became apparent that there needed to be a new contract uh, with Ms. Lori Schweitzer, who is your existing ship administrator, for her to administer this new grant. So I have prepared this contract. I have discussed it with Ms. Lori Schweitzer. I provided a copy to the board uh, via email uh, last week, either Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so unless the board has any questions with me, I am uh, prepared to present this contract for your consideration and recommend approval. So moved. Second. Got a motion on approved by Commissioner Masses. Second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Commissioners, that's the only action item I have for my report. Anybody got anything else for Mr. Shuler? Righty. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Commissioner's comment. I have something, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to just invite all the rest of you. This coming Thursday, we're having a uh, first annual lighting of the palms on St. George Island. Uh, I think the parade's going to line up around 430. Everything's going to kick off shortly thereafter be followed up the next day in East Point we're having the Christmas parade and it's going to line up around four o'clock behind Sellers Plaza so Appalach had some events right around the past Thanksgiving uh, we're celebrating and then it'll move on to Carabell in the middle of the month okay any more commission of comment uh, mr. chairman yeah I just wanted to um, observe how uh, wonderfully uh, last Friday's uh, Apalachicola celebration for Christmas beginning was uh, that evening after Santa Claus arrived. Uh, I think there was almost standing room only here in this town for quite a while. I thought that the luminaries looked excellent. The vendors were open with lights on and uh, there was a tremendous number of people that I met that weren't from around here that, that actually make special time to come here to Franklin County. So we're beginning to see a, a, a bigger influx with regard to our tourist opportunities. The other issue that I'm beginning to, to be thinking about in my district uh, is relative to the Alligator Harbor and the oyster leases that are out there. Um, it has uh, been made real clear to me that uh, the state has um, uh, sold those leases and they've made money on it and uh, the leases are actively going on but the infrastructure has never been considered to support those leases where are the boat ramps where is the opportunity for uh, facilitating seeding of these oysters and all kinds of things and I think that it's a that this is a, a bigger picture than than just oyster leases that what is the infrastructure needed to protect them and I want to be thinking as we go forward uh, how the state can help us in improving infrastructure such as boat ramps and uh, sources of seating and so on. Parking. Parking, exactly. Um, you can, here's a good example of it. At that area called Surf and Sand, uh, there at Alligator Point, um, I've been taught that that's, a, that's a, I see that's the end of a road. That's really not a boat ramp. But there are so many commercial, com, um, commercial fishermen that are out there um, going to their oyster leases, their parking and overflowing onto the highways and so on, and uh, some of them have even been ticketed apparently on Alligator Drive. So for a short term, we may want to think of some possible uh, tag te technique where we maybe have a window sticker or something that means that they are a commercial oysterman in that area, uh, relative different than maybe a recreational person for the time being, something to think about anyway. Um, what, they, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Oh. They always come up with one side of the story. They always, they, the first thing they come in here, they want a three or four hundred thousand dollars. They talking about they doing a study. That study ain't doing nothing, putting money in their pocket. Because if they'd have studied right, they'd have had room for parking and everything else. Relative to the state, you mean? Yeah, the right. state. I the agree. State, they, they over 
that part. And they know, they know them people. How they expect all this to happen? Sure, without without all that. They know what sure. go along with all. That. It's just like this morning when they come in behind that walkway. They telling, hey, the county got to keep yeah. it up. Well, the state of Florida, they got a prison system. Why they can't keep it up? That, that's who should be keeping that sidewalk up. They, they got a prison. They got prisoners up from one end of the state to the other can clean that stuff. <clears throat> but they tell them we gonna have to hire a person. It's not in the budget, but it's gonna be in the budget next next budget. We gonna have to have an extra man just just to do that. The it won't even be built then. I know. Whenever it gets built, right. we gonna have to hire an extra person. But they should do the thing right yep. when they doing all these studies. They should have said we, the people they know people got the park. Right. They know people gonna be coming in there. They need extra park and play because people gonna be coming in there being nosy. And want to know what's going on. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. <laughs> sure, and that happens. It, it, all yeah. this should have been in the study. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, commissioner Paul, you know, we, the county's offered the state uh, two different sh options, and they have not responded to either one. One is the old FSU Marine Lab. It's still sitting down there. It's valuable land that is not being used by the public, and a lot of people could benefit from that. Not just the. the Panama culture, but other people, because it's a perfectly usable piece of land um, with some improvements to it. The other is to come back on the main line of 98 and, and get some land from the St. Joe Company and build a boat ramp there. And we've heard no response from either one. Or the Mormons. So, they have land. Or the, or the Mormons. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. sorry, the Mormons. And I would just one thing, Alan. Do, do you think I, we've had no response, facetiously speaking, maybe they didn't get the letter. Let's do it again, second request. The letter for the letter. Can we do that technique? For the FSU Marine Lab? Yeah. I mean, I've I heard it. The, that, the letter just has never been responded to. It's dead. Uh, well, they haven't responded, but I got acknowledgement that they received the letter. You did? Some of the problem is you had residents there that did not want it there, and so they kind of leaned on their legislators to say, look, we don't want this there. I mean, I've. I've had a discussion with an with a associate director at um, a DAX. Yep. Tell me, well, Michael, the, the people didn't want it, so we're not even pushing it. I'm hearing that in my you know, district. That's so. correct. They don't want the moisture boats going down uh, on the road. Mainly the people at Alligator Point don't want nobody down there. There ain't no parking for them. They're using restrooms in the front no. yard. Yep. But they don't want us to build a park because that will attract more people down there. I understand. So, but get to your point. The states wanted to issue all these leases yep. after we opposed it. And number, one of the main reasons we opposed it because there was no infrastructure there. On this little boat ramp you're talking about, you might can park three trucks and three trailers from the water to the road, the hard road out there. And that's all you got unless you park into somebody's yard. Mm -hmm. like if you get well, there. they <laughs> created this problem. Mm -hmm. And they, the state, needs to go somewhere and build a ramp. They, the state, needs to go to St. Joe and get some land and build parking yep. and a ramp. They need to do that because they created this problem. You don't create a problem and then pass it to somebody else to solve it. Mm -hmm. So this request that we be, uh, that we have been asking the state about, we need to send them a demand letter and tell them to correct their own problem. Yep. Let them maintain the boat ramp. Mm -hmm. Let them buy the land <clears throat> for the parking and make parking. That ain't our responsibility mm -hmm. to, to straighten out what they created, which is exactly what Commissioner yeah. Lockley was trying to say. Yeah. So the next time we write a letter, that's that's the way we need to go. go. Not asking for FSU Marine Lab. If they want to take FSU Marine, Marine Lab, or the old one, which is held by the Board of Trustees, and they want to turn that, that'll be between them and the citizens of Alligator Point, mm -hmm. not between the citizens of Alligator Point and the county. Yeah. And when it gets to this hatchery you're talking about, I got more emails about this proposed uh, zoning chain isn't that something? Between mm -hmm. between them and, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris fills my iPad up every day. Yeah, yeah. Be a hundred emails on mm -hmm. it, and fifty of them be from Alligator Point, mm -hmm. and none of them wants that thing. That's exactly right. None of them. I ain't got the first one that says, "Yeah, we want it." And this is a good example of how the state needs to look at what our folks are saying when they they don't give us the infrastructure we need. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Do we have any other examples? Did you find Harris? some way to block some of these election stuff? We're a What's year out, man. I'm telling you, they're they going to blow my little iPad up. I'll try my best, Commissioner. Every day, you got to go and you got to go and do it. You can't just get clear off because some of these emails are pertinent from you and the attorney and yeah. whoever. So you can't just go through and click all and just delete everything every day. You got to go one by one 
and delete all this stuff. I'll try to step up the filter, sir. They Do burned we, mine up. Michael's got it right now. You burned your some, computer up? I ain't joking. I ain't no joking. We're a year out. Well, Commissioner Bob, back to your question. I mean, yeah, you know, can, can the county regulate who parks down there? Yeah, you could. Sure. Okay. But that's not going to solve the problem because yeah, there's, there's, there's too many people trying to yeah. use a very small okay. area. Is there any other example like Alligator Harbor in the county where the state has done something and didn't provide the app infrastructure to back it up? Do you have any other thought? They don't know about uh, it. Well, I might have to think about it. I mean, okay. not off the top of my head. I mean, you have. They, 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 let, they sold all them licenses for, for, the, for the wild card. I just named provide the numbers. They ain't provide enough shield to put back everything. Same thing. Same thing. They just, well, Commissioner Pryor, you know, the other meetings we went to about the other leases they want to do on this side, they assume that we can use a, a, a Buddy Ward uh, landing, you know, mm -hmm. and all that. So they assume that we're going to use county parks that are there. That's, that's mm -hmm. their assumption. There ain't no park down there, though. Here's the thing. The state issues a license that they tell you straight up, because I've asked Dax before. They said, look, we're not responsible for infrastructure. We just issued a license. How they get there and how they, where they park, that's not our concern. That's their response. How much they call charge for them lights? That's a good question. I About ten grand I, uh, per acre. Uh, they, they, well, they yeah. ought to, they ought to be able to build a yeah a whole lot of stuff. How many yep. how many lights are they giving out? Uh, Thirty or fifty down there now. Forty-eight down yeah. there right now. But they ain't got nowhere to launch a boat or park or nothing else. That's your people's Eight thousand dollars. It's your people's something. That's a lot of money for them. To, what what they doing with it? Well, the lease itself, I think, is five hundred dollars, but the, but the cost of getting all the equipment is a lot more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think what you, what the state of Florida receives is like five hundred dollars, uh, but the cost of operating a lease is a lot more. That's where they take money. Well, somebody bought a bunch of the leases from the state. Okay. When they got it, and so sold yeah. certain okay. person, oh, yeah. several of them. Yeah. It could be a secondary right. market. Going. But he yeah. did, and they yeah. sold them for ten thousand yeah. dollars yeah. at least yeah. because the boys in Caribou just bought some of them from a certain guy from Tallahassee that went through the legislature and got them. Okay. They ten thousand dollars for them to get them. That doesn't seem right. No, public property like that. Okay. Any more public comment? Well. I tell you what, Franklin County. I want to admit, it's the holidays approaching us. And Merry Christmas, <laughs> meeting the joint. Don't we have one more meeting? Yeah, I think we got one more. Well, yeah. I know. I know we.